an icon in the theological spectrum has gone to be with the Lord. Justo Gutierrez is a formidable theologian from the Latin America, specifically from the country of Peru. Justo Gutierrez was born in 1928. During his adolescence age, he suffered a dilapidating disease that relegated him to the wheelchair. At this particular time, he was not able to move as usual as the normal adolescence. Therefore, he acquired a habit of becoming an avid reader, a very ferocious reader who consumed volumes and volumes of books. He studied considerably until he attained PhD. Later, he was ordained a priest. In his seminal work and his clusters, his classic masterpiece, Introduction to Liberation Theology, that was published in 1971. It threw the theological spectrum into the whirlwind, just like the commentary of Karl Barth did in 1914 to the theological playfield, where it was like a bomb detonated at a theological playfield. The basis of his liberation theology are two basic concepts. Number one, God equal love for everybody. But also secondly, though not contradictory, God's preferential treatment of the poor. To say that someone is neutral is to assert passivity, passivity, being passive and complacent. And not only that, but also siding with the unjust and oppressive systems that have been able to be used by the Bogios to the detriment of the holoi poloi, the scum of the earth, the poor. In his liberation theology, he makes it abundantly clear that there is a political liberation the political liberation is the quest to free people from unjust and oppressive political systems. And he was very candid. The liberation theology do, did not shrink from violence. To attain this particular end, some of the priests were killed fighting oppressive systems especially in Latin America. There is also the psychological liberation where the dignity of a human being is asserted and where the oppressive systems are eliminated. Lastly, we have spiritual, sinful oppression. And, sinful, and um, sinful oppression is where Christ deals with sin. And I want to say this liberation theology is a very contextual theology. It dealt with issues of Latin America. It was criticized from the church and outside. From the church, they thought that it was not an orthodox presentation of theology. Sometimes we have conceived that theology that does not regurgitate Western theology that does not advocate to the Western ideals. In the theological seminaries, we were taught from the classics of Wayne Grudem, Louis Bekov, and uh, other theologians, Wilbur Smith, and other theologians. Those were the classic books that we read. And they were considered orthodox. But they are not related 
to our particular context and situation. These books do not address the issues that disturb the African mind and Christian. It scratches where it does not etch. It does not address the issue of um, FGM, fem female genital mutilation. Neither does it address the issue of, um, of um, women marrying women, not necessarily in a Western sense of lesbianism, but where a lady who was not having children could marry a particular lady and a man sires the children for her. There are many African issues that need to be addressed with biblical fidelity and relevance to a particular culture. In my master's thesis, I quoted extensively in my application, Introduction to Liberation Theology by Justo Gonzalez. And I want to say we are also credited to the Latin American theologian. There is also a man by the name of Justo Gonzalez. He is a formidable historical theologian. And you cannot do proper historical theology without studying the works of Justo Gonzalez. That being beside the point, I like to say that yesterday, God enabled us by his grace to survive a mild carbon monoxide attack. God enabled us to be able to rise beyond it, get treatment, and get back home. Therefore, it is in retrospection and with a feeling of deja vu that I reflect on this great theologian, Justo Gutierrez. And I like to say that the church in Africa has a challenge. And the challenge is to adopt a theology that is relevant to our context. And I want to say that the poor have been used by the church, some to advance their own ends. And the basis and the gist of prosperity gospel is to say that the poor will get treatment in church, whereas the prosperity preacher gets treatment abroad. The poor collects money to buy him a vehicle, whereas they languish in abject poverty. This is what Justo Gonzalez, a Peruvian priest, who sought to address the real issues that were contextual, dealt with. The church should not side with oppressive systems. Number two, in the political spectrum, that is uh, in politics, the church, especially during the 2020 two general elections. The church sided with particular partisan political interest. And the church became part and parcel of the government. Since things are falling apart, the church wants to duck the responsibility. Especially the evangelicals, they identify themselves as part and parcel of the political systems. The church should learn from Justo Gutierrez, that the church is not part and parcel of the oppressors and the political class. The church of necessity ought to stand with a distinct prophetic role. Speak against the excesses. We are not part and parcel of the political class. Neither are we political partisan group. We stand as the salt and the light of the world to advocate against the excesses. And we should not stand with multinationals and political governments that are oppressive on the poor, hiking taxes and doing things that are contrary to scripture. We should stand and speak. And also the church has been admonished to live within their means as Christ. Even the Son of Man did not have a place to lay his head. The church, in their quest for wealth, have gone in bed with the political class for their own selfish survival, forgetting 
their ultimate goal. Number three in the church, there has been fight for political positions. And ministers have left their core calling to preach the gospel, to administer sacraments, to visit the poor and meet the people. And they have become political brokers for certain ends. We should rise and go back to the original calling like Justo Gutierrez to write, though he is with the Lord right now, but we interact with him in his seminal work and he still speaks to us through his very illuminating writings. Therefore, it's my call to the church to go back to the original calling and to heed to the words of Justo Gutierrez. I promise that I will continue to serve, minding of my original call. I am not called for any political, I am not called to any position. I am not called to be a power broker, but I am called to preach the gospel, administer sacrament, preach to the ends of the world. My parish is a parish that I am supposed to serve. Wherever God will lead me, I will go without a mama. And today we celebrate Justo Gutierrez. And we celebrate people who believe in a theology that is contextualized. I also thank God for giving us his divine providence and saving us and delivering us from the attack. Me, my wife, Reverend Lydia, and Amy Chesosi. We thank God for his grace. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.